Welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news. We're broadcasting live and then available on demand. We're available on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple Television, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and of course, YouTube and Facebook. It's time to Queer Up the News. It's Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. We're live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight with Al Ferguson. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Al Ferguson, and this evening we bring you the news of and a perspective representing the LGBTQ plus community from South Florida, America, and across our planet. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens, unique in LGBTQ plus news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine Happening Out Television Network is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for our LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 10 pillars of LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our black community, Latino, lesbian, trans, students and youth, seniors, HIV, AIDS, healthcare, business, political advocacy, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. Our magazine is celebrating 38 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news, talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader communities. Well, let's welcome anchor Jasmine Rogers. Jasmine is a queer black Floridian focusing most on her work at the intersection of race and gender. Given the titles Verban, Verbal Assassin and Coalition Magician, Jasmine creates ways to intentionally and unapologetically uh, create diversity in every space. As the marketing and events coordinator for Hotspots and Hotspots Events and co-founder of Let's, Let's Get Lucky, Jasmine works to diversify diversify programming and uplift the voices of South Florida's queer and lesbian community. In her spare time, Jasmine serves on several community boards, spends too much time at Target, I hear, and marvels through travel with her fiance and pups. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you so much, Al. Target, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of Target, a lot of Target. Uh, super excited to be here. It's Women's History Month. We've done some really exciting things over at Hot Spots and we have a lot of exciting things coming up. So thank you for joining us. Let's welcome anchor Jeff Oliverio. Jeff is a founder and treasurer of the Hollywood LGBTQ Plus Council and My Hollywood Pride, which just held their second annual event in downtown Hollywood. Jeff is returning as co-chair for the upcoming 2023 National LGBTQ Task Force Gala in October. The task force events, including the Winter Party Festival this past weekend, have given back more than $3.3 million to the LGBTQ organizations in South Florida. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening. I'm really happy to be here. And um, we're bringing a little more Hollywood pride back this weekend. We're going to be participating in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in downtown oh, Hollywood nice. with the Hollywood Council. So if anybody wants to uh, join us, please go to our Facebook page for um, My Hollywood Pride or the Hollywood LGBTQ See, Council. See, there's the difference in Hollywood and New York. Uh, yeah. Except the... <laughs> um, we were inspired to uh, uh, represent our Community, our community in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and Excellent. we were welcomed with open arms in Hollywood. And so. as Jeff has said 3,000 times, representation matters. Yeah. It rings in my head. Absolutely. Maybe I could find a sexy leprechaun out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and since our, our other friend who always gives a um, what today is, today is National Cereal Day, oh, so yeah. make sure to get your Fruit Loops. Really, Jeff? Oh. Really? Okay. For our LGBTQ plus okay. community. It's, it's time to move on, Jeff. <laughs> 
I saw that. Yeah. On, I saw that on the news this morning. Let's welcome anchor Raji Narayan Singh, Hello. a famous transgender active, activist, actress, author, mystic, and reality TV personality. She is of multiracial descent, and she has appeared on more than thirty-five television shows across the globe. Welcome, Raji. Thank you. And um, just, you know, for the record, I like Captain Crunch. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be back. And I'm here representing trans women on trans, uh, or I should say on Women's Month. Yeah. I'm well, be, well uh, representing the trans woman community. Yes. And especially what's going on with our community and the drag community. So anyway, it's great to be here and be visible. That's yes. right. You got it out? I do. <laughs> Visibility matters. matters. Right. <laughs> So anyway, um, let's see. Oh boy! Of course, my um, I'll pick up for you'll you. You'll pick up for me. I Thank will. You. We are the reporters for Queer News tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points of the queer news for today, Tuesday, March seventh, twenty twenty-three. First. Let's queer up breaking news. Mm. The LGBTQ plus community is shocked as new pride street painting is vandalized in Fort Lauderdale, the gayest place on planet Earth. Mayor Dean Trentellis decries creeping level of hate after vandals deface the LGBTQ plus pride flag painted on a street just off Fort Lauderdale Beach. The mayor says the LGBTQ plus progress pride flag was damaged intentionally. He says that the damage to the flag should be viewed in the context of rising animosity toward traditionally marginalized minority populations. Trentellis, the city's first openly LGBTQ plus mayor, presided over the unveiling of the flag on just February 10th, the day before the Pride of the Americas Parade and Festival at the beach. According to Detective Ali Adamson, a department spokesperson, the Fort Lauderdale Police Department is investigating the incident. The flag measures 75 feet by 18 feet, is in the design of the Progress Pride flag, most of which consists of the six rainbow stripes that are a familiar symbol of LGBTQ plus pride. It also includes the triangular black and brown stripes to represent people of color and baby blue, pink, and white stripes to include the colors of the transgender flag. City spokesman uh, Arlene Borenstein said this total project, including asphalt work, cost $77,375 and the flag was painted on Sebastian Street between State Road A1A, affectionately called Gay 1A, and Seabreeze Boulevard, which is close to the famous LGBTQ plus beach uh, of Fort Lauderdale. Stay tuned at the end of tonight's broadcast for a special exclusive interview with Mayor Trentellis regarding the issue. Well, I've talked to uh, the mayor today and we've talked about the issue. Uh, disturbingly, he talks about uh, anti-Semitic and, uh, and black related uh, issues that are like this uh, embracement uh, attack on our image of LGBT out at Fort Lauderdale Beach. And it seems to be a growing uh, issue that is going on. Very surprising because we're such a progressive community. Yeah. Now, whether this is people that are coming into the community are doing it, maybe visitors to the community, they're not identifying that. But he does indicate that they have high confidence that they're going to find the perpetrator uh, of this because it was videotaped. Mm. And and so we will That's we'll see. Uh, what do y'all think about? Uh, are you surprised that this uh, vandalism well, okay, so vandalism occurred? I don't know. Maybe I am an optimistic person. I've always been that way, optimistic. Just I try to look at the brighter side of life. But when I hear about these things happening, I'm like, oh my God, there are there are really people out there that hate us you know hate our community and i really try to give people the benefit of the doubt when i'm out and about but it makes me fearful to go out like when i go out now and you know i went through this years before and it was finally feeling a little comfortable to be out in society people didn't seem like oh my god like look at that um that unicorn anymore because of the visibility that the trans community has had but now when i'm out i can 
can feel it. Mm -hmm. I see like the look and mm -hmm. you know, and you can feel it's getting tense. It's yeah. getting tense. I mean, I, I think we can't underestimate what's happening. And the reason people hate us is because the other side who is against us is, is giving them reason to hate and fear us, that we're trying to, you know, groom their children, that we're a menace to society, that we're, we're, we're you know, we're taking away them from the moral fabric of the United States. Yeah. So it's not that they just hate us because again, there is, we've always had our, our haters. Correct. Um, but now they feel emboldened to attack us, which I think is the scary thing. Because I mean, I talked to um, another friend of mine who is trans today, um, talking about going out in public and doing things and saying things that um, she never ever thought twice about. She's now thinking, you know, I don't, I, I feel more at risk and exposed yeah. um, because um, she indicated that she feels that people are trying to size her up. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 in the past, where she could blend and not have that exposure, um, was very concerned about that. So you know, the governor and you know, legislatures across the country are giving people the right to attack us mm -hmm. because we're kind of a monster. So you know, we're we're a target. Well, and I'm also wondering, um, similar to the flag that happened uh, north of us, the vandalism on that flag they were able to use one of the Republican bills to prosecute those those mm -hmm. folks. Because mm -hmm. there was that new bill that said, you know, you can't deface monuments that was supposed mm -hmm. to be protecting the Confederate statue. But when you have things like this that are considered now a monument or whatever, if classified as such, there's a different level of crime that you've now committed. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in also how they're going to take action for the accountability mm -hmm. of this. But even the idea of, um, progressivism right and like the gayest city uh, in america and things like that is like how number one we're having an influx of people coming in from all these other states because desantis has invited them uh in covid uh but also i feel like there have always been these pockets of people in south florida that are not as progressive and now they have the space to be more out loud mm. uh, and we see time and time again election after election we saw it in the last election that the edges of our of our county are getting more and more red mm -hmm. uh, from the east and the west. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something to, to just be mindful of and to to watch. Because because yeah. actually South Florida was like a safe zone for me. Yeah. I always said if you're gonna live mm -hmm. in Florida and be someone like me, South Florida is the place mm -hmm. to live. But it like you said, it's like it seems like they're closing in, closing yeah. in on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, next let's queer up gay culture. Sawmill Campground becomes America's most successful nonprofit LGBTQ plus co-op. Sawmill, the premier gay campground in America, which also happens to be clothing optional, is the safest place for many LGBTQ plus community members. It's sort of in the middle of nowhere, about an hour and a half north of Tampa, with a blink and you'll miss it sign at the entrance. It's one hour west of Orlando, but behind the inconspic inconspicuous gate, the grounds are a gorgeous balance of promiscuity and privacy. There are acres of trails in the woods with a reputation for cruising and plenty of platonic spaces for those who don't partake, with manicured park homes, a pool, two bars, and a nightclub called Woody's. Sawmill is a private membership club that has more than 45,000 members. In 1999, Women's Weekend, a tri-annual event, was first launched in Sawmill, and the place was transformed from a place dominated by mostly gay men into a truly co-ed community of lesbians, queer women, trans, and non-binary folk. Most people hear about Sawmill through word of mouth and come for a specific event, like pup, leather, 70s bathhouse, Latin or women's weekends before ending up lifelong visitors. At a time when queer and trans people face continued political and personal violence, Sawmill is keeping a feeling of joy intact. Sawmill was founded by a group of gay men and was sold in 2005 to two straight men from West Palm Beach. There were significant complaints that they took money from the gay community but did not reinvest. Starting in 2010, a group of gay men, including founding and organizing and lead storyteller at Queer News Tonight, Al Ferguson, helped organize a group of 79 investors to purchase Sawmill for $4.25 million and history was made as Sawmill became America's first nonprofit co-op community. Al helped orchestrate RuPaul coming in 2009 to help raise money for the co-op and then came again in 2014 to celebrate the Sawmill co-op with RuPaul's 
only live performance in North America that year. It is believed that this was the last live public concert RuPaul has ever done. Legendary. Yes. Very legendary. Thank you, Al. Have you, uh, have you been to Sawmill? Any of you been to Sawmill? No. I have not, no. I've all, but I've only heard amazing and great feedback. You know, for a long time, uh, Sawmill got this uh, kind of negative reputation. Um, you know, whenever a lot of, uh, especially gay men, gather, uh, it can create <laughs> a, a reputation rotational kind of um, uh, profile. Uh, Sawmill has stood the test of time. Uh, in 2010, it became a nonprofit co-op, became the first um, uh, nonprofit, uh, basically uh, queer community, uh, where you could live there, uh, you had shares in it, uh, you had a house, wow. uh, you could have a house mm -hmm. there, uh, cabins and tenting, um, very diverse. It focuses on the trans community, it has uh, women's weekends where all the guys say, wait, let's uh, withdraw <laughs> out of the for spaces yeah. and uh, for a weekend, but, but yes, Real but cool. three times a year. And, and to say oh. uh, for, for women, this is a unique space yeah. in all of America for, for women, three times a year. <laughs> and yes, the joke uh, lands on me. And it's an amazing place. I encourage all of you to go. Uh, Halloween, they have uh, a haunted house. That's and uh, Mardi Gras, they have a Mardi Gras parade. Uh, one time we brought in one of the big uh, Gasparilla floats. And the owner oh. of Festive Floats came herself uh, to pull uh, the float. And it had a Ferris wheel and a uh, merry-go-round on the float. And it went through uh, uh, all of uh, Sawmill. Now, There's so many fun I'll have fun a question. Events. It's closing optional? Uh, the entire acreage. Well, I'll just clothing. say this. <laughs> I'd love to go, but I don't know about taking off my clothes, and, honey, and, and because you, I don't want to scare you, it's, anybody. It's optional. <laughs> it's it, it's whatever you're comfortable. Yeah. And but it sounds doing. like it would be a really yeah. fun community is, to visit. It is a fun yeah. uh, weekend. I encourage do, all of you. Do you think there's any risk? To the mm -hmm. to the community with what's happening in Florida, is there zero. any way to uh, absolute zero on that? Uh, absolute zero. It sits on 200 acres. It has a private gate, wow. 24 hours a day yeah. security. You can't get onto the property, uh, uh, and it's through That's a 24 hour thing. gate security. So uh, it's interesting because. Um, I, I mean, in you doing this story, people can go to Sawmill and you get through the gate and you feel, okay, for the 24, 48, 70, uh, six hours that you're there, there's no Ron DeSantis coming. Yeah. Uh, it is completely an embracement of uh, whatever you represent in the LGBTQ community. You're going to be able to represent it at Sawmill, and there's exactly. no. It, it really, it really is. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that Corey News tonight is doing this story tonight, uh, focusing attention on very Sawmill. Very Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, next, let's queer up religion. Pro LGBTQ plus Christian school closes due to donor backlash. A Christian school that showed support for the LGBTQ plus community was forced to close down after its conservative donor base stopped giving it money. Urban Christian Academy, a private K through eight school in Kansas City, Missouri, with an enrollment of 100 students, had long stressed inclusivity in general terms, noting in its mission statement that following Jesus, quote, opens up doors and makes room at the table, end quote. Last year, however, the school added a paragraph to its website which says, quote, We are an affirming school. We stand with the LGBTQIA plus community and believe in their holiness. We celebrate the diversity of God's creation in all its varied and beautiful forms, end quote. School officials say that the updated paragraph prompted most of its donors to pull their financial support citing their religious beliefs that homosexuality is sinful and supporting LGBTQ plus identities is incompatible with being Christian. Kaylee Calloway-George, UCA's executive director and co-founder, cited the new language as the chief reason for the decrease in donations. She said the school expected some backlash. The drop-off in donations came after eight churches withdrew their support for the school in response to the affirming language. Even though the institutions were only responsible for 2% of the school's funding, the members of those congregations were a larger donor base and seemed to take their cues from the church's responses. Well, um, 
this is a fascinating story for me because I'm a child of a pastor, a grandchild of a pastor, oh, a niece I didn't of a know pastor. That. Yeah, wow. yeah. Really? Lots of church oh, in your very, blood. Very, <laughs> very, very, very religious growing up. Church every single day. Um, but I think that the what the church said about you know the holiness of LGBTQ plus people, and that you know loving Jesus opens your arms yeah. to to everyone. I think is exactly spot on with what I believe, you know, yeah. the Bible has explicitly said about who is welcome into into the church, into into heaven, into Jesus' arms and all of that. So to hear that folks, it, like just the mere mention of LGBTQ+, plus, like yeah. at the specificity of it made them take their dollars, even though the original statement was just as accepting, <laughs> you know, just as yeah. much as we accept everyone. But yeah. the mere mention of that specificity, specificity made people say, oh, no, that's too far. You, you've yeah. taken it too far. Yeah. You know, I, I, from what I've heard of the stories of Jesus, I learned that mm. Jesus loved everyone. Yeah. Jesus sat with all types of people. And, you know, for them to make the statement, I thought it was just absolutely the epitome of being a Christian. Yeah. Because Christian, isn't that someone that's supposed to be patterning their life after the life right. of the way Christ lived right. when he was on the, the right. planet, on the earth? And so, I, you know, I commend them for taking that stand, but it's it shows what that community, you know, is. Because, you know, it's almost like people, a lot of times, and I'm not saying all Christians, all anybody, but what I've seen is that a lot of times it's almost like they become God yeah. and, 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 yeah. and the judge, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the judge. And isn't one of the things in the Bible, thou shall not judge? Yeah. You know, this is between me and, and the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know, let me handle it. And, right. and you and the Holy Spirit and you and it you. It creates the term radical evangelical. Yeah. 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 What you're talking about is the radical evangelical, uh, uh, it, the, the bubbling up from the bottom of more and more acceptance is starting to happen. It's just not uh, to the radical evangelicals. We reported last night in Core News tonight um, on Sunday, the Salvation Army Army, um, which has historically been uh, not good in, mm -hmm. in LGBT. They're improving, they are improving, but, not, but historically not good. Uh, they awarded Sunday uh, in here on this campus at Sunshine Cathedral, they uh, awarded Sunshine uh, Cathedral uh, their Community Hero of the Year, wow. the wow. organization oh. Sunshine from Salvation That's Army. That's big. And it really is big. And, and what Salvation Army was saying is during one of the reasons, one of the big reasons that they cited it, and we, we, we showed some video from it yesterday, was that during the pandemic, our food resources were running mm -hmm. dry and we put out a call uh, to all mm -hmm. kinds of churches and we didn't quite understand what Sunshine Cathedral cathedral was and we put out this call and the only response that we got for weeks was from Sunshine Cathedral to help support them in food and it surprised them so much <laughs> that Sunshine would support the Salvation Army. Sun, uh, the Salvation Army came back and said wait we want to make sure that we recognize we've got some work to do on improvement right. and here's one of the ways that we will do that so everybody is not these seven churches uh in uh, missouri right. uh, but we do have a long right. long road still ahead but what an example though that yeah sunshine was able to say that's like despite what you believe like mm -hmm. we know that you are helping people you're providing food and we want to help fulfill you know the the mission yeah. of christ yeah and i mean sometimes i wonder uh and and my dad's over me at this point, but I make jokes with him about the Bible. And sometimes I'm like, are we all reading the same book here? Yeah. <laughs> because it is very clear that like he who is without sin cast the first stone when yeah. Jesus saved, yeah. you know, a woman caught in adultery from being stoned to death. Right. Yeah. When he was flipping tables in the temple or, you know, all these different things. Or one of his best friends was a sex worker. Mm. Well, like, there's very clear examples in yeah. black and white of how we should Jasmine, be treating I'm, people. Before we move on to uh, Raji uh, and the next story about education. I, I'm curious, in your family, are they accepting today all of this religious uh, background and integration? Mm -hmm. is, it a, mm. is it a good time or not necessarily so a good time? My immediate family, my mother, my father, my sister, yes. 
um, because my parents are, are batting two out of three with LGBTQ kids. So. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. So my okay. sister is bi, I'm queer, and I have a brother. So two out of three. So it's like, you know, the pastor's kids, if two of the three of them can yeah. be, you yeah. know, then what are we doing? Yeah. And I also think that for, well, I know that for my parents, having an affirming relationship with us is more important than, yeah. you know, trying to believe what other people have told you that you should believe yeah. about people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, difficult to understand. And I also think that for my mom, it was coming from a place of safety. Yeah. That's like, you realize that your life, you yeah. being out for you, right. Yeah. Is going to be more dangerous. Yes, You're making your life harder. Of like course. why? Yeah. But then also she is very clear that, you know, if you make a decision to not accept this, that means we're not here anymore. Yeah. And she'd rather be like, I'm here with you. I'm yeah. on this journey. Yeah. Like, Keeping let's do my this. Child. Right. Um, my extended family, I'm not quite sure, only because I have not talked to them long before I've come out. But my uh, my analysis of them would be that they, they would not be yeah. as accepting. And the reason I ask you that question is, frankly, for me, from my seat uh, in the black community, church, black church, mm -hmm. is a linchpin for mm -hmm. LGBT. And, yeah. and, and so, w even more, I'm Southern Baptist. I was raised Southern Baptist. Not every day, but almost every yeah. day. Yeah. And, and, and of faith, but my church preached hate but honestly, mm -hmm. my experiences in my Southern Baptist church was not the kind of hate that was right. preached in black church. And, and LGBT, I, I've, my heart's always gone out to LGBT in, in black uh, community church because it seems to have so far to right. come. And that's why I asked. Well, and that. what's interesting about that is that the churches I grew up around, and even my, my dad's church never explicitly talked about, you know, homophobic messages or anything like that. Never. And we were in church literally Sunday to Sunday, <laughs> like wall to wall church. And I never remember a message that was explicitly that about that. Yeah. But that was it was weird. also kind of understood in the way that's like, you know, one day you're going to grow up, you're going to marry a good man, mm -hmm. the man is the head of the household, you'll have some kids, type of situation like that was like the understood, yeah, undertone to it, but, and, and you know, being Christ-like and all yes. these different things, but not in a way that was like homosexuality is a sin, yeah. as that I've seen in other Churches. churches. I think yeah. a lot of the black churches realize that if they spoke out against mm. it too much, they lose their organ player, right. <laughs> the, right. the singers in the choir. The, the, the pastor. The pastor. The pastor. This really gets serious now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> On another very special episode of right. Right. Yeah. Right. We could exactly. have a religious episode. Yeah. Like, exactly. We could do it. Right. Boy, that was a really um interesting topic. Next, let's queer up education. Anti-LGBTQ state laws are starting to change application and admission choices for from college students. Florida state lawmakers have passed laws that block classroom discussions about sexual orientation or gender identity in primary schools and aim to restrict race-based conversation and analysis in business and education. Another recent bill would let the state board that oversees public universities give direction on removing major and minors in subjects like critical race theory and gender studies and bar spending on programs and activities that support such uh, curricula. Cindy Nobles, who serves as president of Jackson Chapter of the L Jacksonville Chapter of the LGBTQ advocacy, advocacy group P Flag, said Florida legislation has quote changed how I'm looking at every school end quote. Interviews with students, parents, and college counselors suggest LGBTQ young people are striking colleges in states where such legislation is being pushed. Some students worry about having access to hormone therapy while away at school. Some want to attend schools with all gender housing options and others fear hostile rhetoric 
puts them at the heightened risk of physical violence across the country. State legislators have moved to restrict LGBTQ rights with hundreds of bills already this year, introducing in including in Texas, Alabama, Tennessee, and Arizona. Some schools would stop people from changing their gender identity on official documents or force teachers to tell parents about any information they learn about a student's gender identity. Advocates say a shift in college applications from LGBTQ students could lead to diminished diversity at colleges where part of the learning experience is encountering people of different backgrounds. Oh my God. You know what? I don't want to be a drama queen, <laughs> but this feel this like reminds me of Nazi Germany because what did they do first? They were like, let's, let's, let's you know, identify. Mm -hmm. Let's identify who the Jews are. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and then and let's, queers. Yeah, and queers. Yeah. And let's let's make them wear a patch. And you know, this is just like little stuff that then led to what we all know was the horrific Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You know, but it just puts me in that frame of mind. I'm like, what are you all trying to do to our community? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I. You know, I went to a very uh, progressive and diverse university in New Jersey, Rutgers, which is considered yes. typically one of the most progressive universities in the country and always has been. Um, and being a parent of a student and having a Florida prepaid college mm -hmm. um, fund for my son to go to college in Florida, I'm questioning that decision. And I'm questioning it because I want my son to go to a school and be in an environment where it'll be like, I hope, the real world, which is being around diverse people learning about actually learning about history and having um, the the same beliefs that I believe in taught in his university um, you know I'm I'm actually uh, Rutgers does a lot of work around diversity equity and inclusion you, know, you can go to their website and see they have a huge center around DEI um, but um, I'm wondering if, if these schools are going to start giving some um, giving some encouragement to out-of-state students. Obviously, you pay out-of-state tuition because you don't live there, but I feel like in the environment that we're in, they need to have a pathway for students. Like I would, I'd much rather take that money that I have in a Florida prepaid and apply it to a school that I believe in, as opposed to being in a state that's not going to teach you know Black history or or, or you know about gender identities. Right. That is fascinating. I hadn't even thought about that, but I think that that is great. And I, I mean, it, it for me, it makes me think of I raised your Rutgers, a Smith College, which is where mm -hmm. my fiance went. Yes, and she's obsessed with it. And Wait, every your fiance went to Smith Smith College, well. right? So <laughs> when she tells me about the professors they've had on you campus, don't know Google Smith College. Yeah. You know, and Angela right. Davis, Abel Hooks, a Barbara Smith, these black feminist icons, and I'm like, icons. Wait a minute, exactly. like they just taught there, and it's the idea that's like. We can't have any of that here in Florida at risk of losing funding yeah. or, or things like that. Another thing in the package that I had not thought about was for students that need gender affirming care when they're in Florida schools. And what does that mean when you're in college? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that I think is something that is a serious consideration that folks um, need to be making uh, about the safety of, of these students in Florida. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting to me. Um, uh, the University of Florida is is ranked uh, very high, generally in most of the national um, uh, standard indexes. Mm -hmm. USA Today, which is really the Bible uh, of valuation, the University of Florida is ranked as the fifth best public institution in America. You have to wonder what's going to happen mm -hmm. now yep. because you cannot continue to be an outstanding um, educational um, uh, university or college and reject uh, the diversity and inclusion that you want on your college campus. Right. Because at the end of the day, when you exclude, you become whiter and whiter mm -hmm. and you become more masculine and more masculine. And both of those are an indication right. of bad things to come. Right. Uh, of course, those are core bases, but the diversity of women, of religious diversity, of minority diversity, of queer diversity, of faith diversity, are all the things that help in your educational process to expose you to all of the kind of critical thinking yeah. that you should yeah. be exposed to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the antithesis of great education. 
we'll watch what happens at the University of Florida very closely. Well, and very quickly, I'll just to end that, you even not only just the rejection of diversity, but the rejection of fact. Yes. How can and you be? Right? How can you be a science. preeminent institution and reject exact? <laughs> I mean, like, let's not even get on, you know, the history, like right. wanting to deny black history. Yeah. yeah. Not even discuss it as as queer I, theory in right. an AP class. Right. Yes. Right. right. I mean, right. come on. Anyway. Oh, right. Okay. Next, uh, let's queer up drag culture. Drag race queens slam silent allies over anti-trans, anti-drag bills. Silent support is no longer enough. Trans people and drag artists have always been at the forefront of fighting for LGBTQ plus rights, and the same thing is happening once again in 2023. With hundreds of new pieces of transphobic and anti-drag legislation being introduced voted on and even passed by conservative politicians, high-profile stars of RuPaul's Drag Race are fighting back and urging those who call themselves allies to take a firm stand in defense of the LGBTQ plus community. Tennessee has become the first state in the U.S. to pass a bill with significant restrictions to drag shows. Unfortunately, hundreds of similar bills are being brought up in other states. CPAC speaker Michael Knowles has given a dangerously transphobic call to action saying, quote, transgenderism must be eradicated, end quote. This has ignited fury and fear within the LGBTQ plus community. Even though some queer people are already starting to fight back, many are also calling upon our allies to stand with us in this fight. Drag race queens like The Jinx, Ben De La Creme, Bianca Del Rio, and others are appealing to people to raise their voices in support of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I, I think I've been bringing this up you know, all along is to say, where are the allies? Where are the corporate sponsors? Where are the voices to come out against these things? Um, you know, I had my, my younger cousin was here this past weekend before they were going on a family cruise. He's uh, 23, went to college in Tennessee, is gay, um, obviously goes to the gay bars. And we were talking about the drag ban and you know, uh, what the community is going to be like and, you know, he's not someone who I would say was ever kind of had an activist, you know, grew up as uh, being 23. It was like, oh, it's always going to be like this. And, 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 you know, they're talking about, you know, that you won't be able to be in drag, come to work, get out of your car and walk three blocks because you'll be appearing in public as right. in drag. So they will have to get dressed in private and not be seen in public. I guess in Tennessee, which is, he asked me if we have that here, is they do a lot of these like party buses where they have drag events and they do them on like oh, these. And, okay. and so he's like, well, those won't be impacted because they're self enclosed. And I was thinking, so what, we're going to like, you know, push us into trains and it's vehicles? Impossible, it's impossible to believe uh, that this is challenged in that scenario that you just did, that separate but equal uh, yep. clause in the Constitution. Right. Uh, First Amendment clauses in the Constitution will not challenge and ultimately take on Tennessee. But the fact is we're going to have to go through the process to right. prove yes. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and that's a good point about the First Amendment because like at what point is drag drag in their definition? Like what is the line? Is it hair? Is it makeup? Yeah. Is it outfit? Is it the heels? Like at what point is the walk to your car? Just like, no, this is just how I dress on a regular basis yeah. versus a show, yeah. you know, that a minor could watch. Yeah. But it also makes me think of um, Florida right now. We're in a super majority so they can waive the rules and pretty much do whatever they want. Whatever but what does want. that look like if they see this happen in Tennessee for them to catch an idea and do it here? And what happens to Palace, you know, on yeah. South Beach and or Twitter? Exactly. Or all these places where, you know, the street is a part of the show. Yeah. The public is a part of the show. Yeah. And what about interpretation? Because say I'm walking down a street right. in Tennessee, they may interpret me as a drag queen. Right. I get people that come up to me and say, oh, where do you perform? Because right away they assume that I'm, you know, a drag performer at a club. Right. So, you know, how would that impact right. just the trans community? Right. And this thing about, you know, this attack on our community, yeah. The trans community and the drag community. The trans community were less than one yeah. percent of and the defenseless. Wor the yeah. world it's population. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, let's attack uh, three-year-old children. Uh, it, it, the trans community <laughs> requires our defense. Yeah. It, it it just simply does. It, it, this is going to be very unpopular, and I'm going to be criticized for it. Um, 
But this story is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad Jinx and others are, are doing this. But I want to say, um, and this comes from some, uh, some history of an eye on RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, uh, where have y'all been? Mm -hmm. This has been going on for yeah. six months. <laughs> this is not new. This is not new. Yeah. This is the first story that we have told in an active fashion that RuPaul queens are going, wait, um, where were you five months ago? When our house was attacked, when mm -hmm. um, the, the drag show in California in the Silicon Valley happened, where were we all? We are happy that we are seeing, wait, we're raising an escalating uh, defense. Uh, that's my first observation. Uh, are you coming to the party late? Because this party is not a very good party uh, for you to join, but your voice is incredibly needed, incredibly needed because of the people who follow and pay attention to you, especially in the entertainment industry. If you can get at a table at, um, at the Emmys, uh, there are people at the Emmys that are way more powerful than the drag queens of RuPaul's Drag Race that will pay attention and then start to voice opposition to what we're watching to drag queens, the trans community, etc. The second thing that I think is really important here is we must be very careful on your voices next. Don't make sure you think through your advocacy of how you're going to face uh, this uh, issue. When you turn your attention to Ron DeSantis, mm -hmm. make sure it's not wholesale destruction of the entire state of Florida. Okay. Yes. I just had this conversation with the mayor of Fort Lauderdale just today. Uh, Broward County is different than uh, Sarasota County. Um, Miami-Dade County is different than Duval County in Jacksonville. So your attack needs to be with a scalpel, mm -hmm. not with a grenade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as you're doing that, make sure you're standing up for your drag queens and your trans community in the select communities that need your support because they do things differently than Jacksonville or Sarasota or some of, or or in Tennessee. Memphis is different than Nashville. Yeah. And so make sure you're not throwing grenades and trying to blow the entire uh, population up right. because it needs your scalpel of your tongue and voice right. and attitude, not the nuclear bomb. Right. And I think Good to that point in transitioning into our next story is also make sure anybody coming from out of town is having conversations with people in Florida about what it is that we need and how you can support yeah. and what is going yes. on. Uh, because arguably, I'd, I'd say that um, immigrants were the first people that warned us about DeSantis. Mm -hmm. When his campaign ads were showing mm -hmm. him building a wall with oh, his yeah. kid, yeah. immigrants were the one that were like, this guy true. is terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. It's dangerous. We need to do something. Dangerous. So let's pay attention to the folks that are, that are here in the state and experiencing this. Next, let's queer up trans rights. 16 AGs condemned DeSantis' request for info on transgender care from colleges. Ron DeSantis has asked state universities to complete a survey detailing the number of students who have accessed treatments for gender dysphoria, including gender reassignment surgeries and hormone prescriptions. The survey also asked for the ages of the students, but no other identifying details. However, 16 Democratic attorneys general have condemned Florida, Ron De Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's request for information about students who sought or received gender affirming care at public colleges in Florida. The coalition led by New York Attorney General Letitia James wrote in a letter to DeSantis, quote, his information request may be intended to intimidate and will actually intimidate uni university administrators and healthcare providers and chill vulnerable students from accessing necessary medical care, end quote. Reputable medical groups, including the American Medical Association, have warned that restrictions on gender-affirming care could lead to negative impacts on mental health for trans youth who have an increased risk of suicide. But DeSantis and other high-profile Republicans, including former President Trump, have honed in on gender-affirming care as a target and sought to restrict people's ability to access it. DeSantis administration has asked the state board regulating doctors to essentially ban transition related care for trans minors and advise doctors to ignore federal guidance and stop assisting children and teens with gender transitions. 
I just wonder, at what point are we going to talk about HIPAA? <laughs> like, at what yeah. point are we going to talk about yeah. people's private medical information? Excellent. Like, you, you, you know who's going to talk about HIPAA? <laughs> the Supreme Court. <laughs> yeah. Right, like, you talk cannot... Just like I remember being in college as an 18 year old, you of course fresh out of college, and my mom is like, Can I call and find out her grades? And the school was like, No, no, you can't. No, <laughs> so it's like in that same vein that they're like, Your child is now 18 and in yeah. college, you mm -hmm. cannot find out that information unless she says it's okay. Like, how dare yeah. you think that you're, you're privy? to that information. I'm sorry, did for, you say, how dare you how to dare Governor you? DeSantis? Like, how dare you? I just think that that is, I think it's yeah. absolutely just incredible. I mean, and, and to Raji's point, it's creating this national registry of right. trans people right. yes. that they can then target for right. who knows what. I mean, why would we need to share that information? Do I need to share that I take sinus medication next yeah. because I have a sinus problem? Like, what is next on the list of things they're going to come at you for? Yeah. Um, you know, there's, you know, whether it's um, um, healthcare around HIV and AIDS, are they going to yes. make people register that they're taking PrEP so that Ron DeSantis can then track what you're... I mean, it, there is no end to this. It is a yeah. rabbit hole that he is has no end it seems. and what has me why scratching? by the way I, and i and then coming back to you why um court challenges it will fail because mm -hmm. under equal protection of the law yes it will not survive yes it won't right. sorry what has me scratch in my head is for a party that claims less government right. okay for a party that's always claiming less government right meanwhile you want to dictate a number of things in regards to trans people and you know black studies and you There's are There's a word for that, I think. What is that word? <laughs> it's called gaslight. <laughs> yeah, and he's a racist. Right, uh, right, right. You know, DeSantis uh, is a racist. One one Okay, and I'm just going to call it out. One right. Wait, there's nobody at this table disagreeing. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Uh, uh, Jasmine, in my opinion, gets it right in the first word. HIPAA. HIPAA. Yeah. Um, there's no, in my, in my head, I, I, we, it remains to be seen. It's going to, it'll get through the courts. It remains to be seen. It's like George Wallace standing on the steps uh, right. uh, in, in, in Alabama uh, in terms of saying we are not going to integrate our schools. Dude, yes, we are. Yeah. And he's going to lose. Right. But that's not what's going on here. HIPAA is not what's going on here. I think uh, the story, um, you get it completely right. It's designed to intimidate and scare. And what he wants to do is gaslight and, and dis uh, distract us long enough for him to be elected president of the United States. <laughs> he's reaching out to his base. He's blowing the whistle. He's done six states in the last 10 days. What he wants to do is say, I'm your champion. Donald Trump is not your champion. I'm your champion. And so look what I'm doing. I'm making you get into a registry uh, clearly in a HIPAA violation yeah. in health departments uh, at university schools. You can't do it. But by the time it gets to the court of making that decision, he's accomplished what he wants to do. He's okay, president. I've lost. No problem. I'm president of the United States now. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. So what? so what you're calling out, I just want to make sure I understand this out. You're saying it's basically a bunch of hot air because a lot of this stuff won't stand it, once it, it gets to the Supreme It won't stand. Court. Equal protection of the law. The 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 one I talked to uh, to um, uh, Mayor De, um, uh, Mayor Trentellis just today. There is a, a law that is going to be proposed and debated and likely going to be accepted by supermajority that says if you're a podcaster talking about the governor, you to must register. file with us to register your speech. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, wait, uh, I'm not sure even in 1939 in Berlin, yeah. something like that happened. Yeah. Will he succeed? No, ultimately he will not. Okay. But it's that's not what's intended here. He's creating firestorms of fear to get him to 2024. That's what he's well, doing. Let's not be distracted. Right. And I think that to me, it also scares me that on the one hand, I want to believe like these things won't pass, and then on the other hand, I also see the tea leaves. It's like he has oh, his Supreme wait. Court, his oh, his Florida Supreme I'm Court. I'm sorry, if I'm people. not clear, they're going to pass, and even aren't 
the federal we Supreme can't Court. Store, oh, well, oh uh, my goodness. Again, once he becomes president, oh, if we're not careful goodness. about Congress, yeah. like yeah. those, th okay. those are all dominoes that can fall, even for something so Wait, ridiculous as George this. George Orwell, are you going to write a book? <laughs> anytime? <laughs> so. And even, I mean, Florida has. Florida, we talk about abortion care because that was even a registry conversation yeah. that, you know, we need to know who's getting what and all of that. Florida has uh, one of the strongest privacy protections in the South, which is what has upheld mm -hmm. our abortion access for so long that people have a right to privacy in their mm -hmm. homes and their relationship yeah. without interference with the government. Yeah. This also comes should come under that privacy that you should be able to do what you need to do for yourself in your home yeah. and allow that to be protected. But the more that they could try to chip away at that, everything else can come tumbling down. Yeah. So. Well, next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday international service at 1030 a.m. Hello everyone, my name is Francia. I am an Afro-Venezuelan singer, songwriter, dancer, healing through music. You can find me on all social media platforms at Francia Canta, and you can find my album Infinita on all music streaming platforms as well. That's Francia Infinita. And Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Well, Fox News, Tucker Carlson, and radical conservatives have suggested the LGBTQ plus community has a secret plan, and we can only guess it's for world domination. Well, we couldn't agree more. And that is why we're going to tell you all about it right now in our segment called The Gay Agenda. In The Gay Agenda, we queer up South Florida and Florida. Wilton Manor's Island City stage hit comedy, I Wanna Fucking Tear You Apart is a comedy about LGBTQ plus and friendship. Wilton Manor's Island City Stage season 11 is ready with an entertainment bonanza. Starting today through April 2nd is Morgan Gould's play named I Wanna Fucking Tear You Apart. It is co-produced by DC Allen and Ken Flick. The plot goes <clears throat> like this. Samantha and Leo are a team. They're best friends, roommates, and allies against the world until a new friend enters and upends their codependent world of mutual self-loathing and Grey's Anatomy marathons. This is a play about the nature of friendships in all its fucked up forms, with a special shout out to the kind of love that sometimes looks a lot like rage. In the gay agenda, we queer up the USA View. A rare win as Michigan legislature passes statewide protection for LGBTQ+. The Michigan Senate has voted to pass new civil rights legislation that would finally establish statewide protection for LGBTQ plus people. After taking control of the state legislature this year, for the first time in almost four decades, Democrats successfully passed an amendment to the 1976 Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act, which would add sexual orientation and gender identity to the list of categories protected in the areas of housing and employment discrimination. Three Republicans joined the chamber's Democrats to pass the legislation. 23 to 15. The bill now heads to the House. If approved by the lower chamber, Governor Gretchen Whitmore has promised to sign it into law. In the gay agenda, we queer up South Florida and Florida. 
Diversity Honors returns at Hard Rock with eight honorees for Harvey Milk Foundation. Diversity Honors, the globally renowned celebration that benefits Harvey Milk Foundation and the Pride Center at Equality Park, exclusively hosted by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, will take center stage again on Saturday, April 1st at 7 p.m. to recognize those who are transforming lives by living authentically and advancing inclusiveness. This year, the foundation will honor Commissioner Nicole M. Ramirez with the prestigious Harvey Milk Medal, Carol Moran with the Pride Center at Equality Park Allen Schubert Award, and Stoli Group's global CEO, Damian McKinney, with the 2023 Global Business Leadership Award. Additional honorees for this year's event include Florida State Senator Chevron Jones, drag TV star and entrepreneur Latrice Royale, South Florida Symphony Orchestra's president and CEO, Jacqueline Lorber, and music director, Sabrina Maria Alfonso, and the Bears of South Florida. In the gay agenda, we queer up sports. All trans soccer teams set to make history. Last year on Trans Day of Visibility, Truck United FC played a historic game against Dulwich Hamlet's Women's FC with a team composed entirely of trans women. The 2022 match sparked a conversation around trans inclusion in sports, a trick Truck is hoping to repeat this year with the introduction of an all trans men's team. Truck United FC men will play their first match on Trans Day of Visibility, March 31st, 2023, against supporters of Dulwich Hamlet FC. The Truck United FC women's team will also play that day against Dulwich's women's <clears throat> team. Arthur Weber is set to captain Truck United FC all-trans men's team, which is the first time a team of solely trans men plays in Europe. In the gay agenda, we queer up trans rights. Girls high school basketball team forfeits a game because it refused to play against a team with a transgender <clears throat> player. Mid-Vermont Christian School in Junction had scheduled to play Long Trail School in Dorset on February 21st, but the game never happened. The Vermont Christian High School forfeited a girls basketball game because the opposing team had a transgender player. Vicki Fogg, the head of the Mid-Vermont Christian School, said the team decided not to participate, quote, because we believe playing against an opponent with a biological male jeopardizes the fairness of the game and the safety of our players, end quote. There has been a heated debate for years over including transgender athletes. Some states, such as Florida, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Texas, banned transgender youths from competing on sports teams that aligned with their gender identities. In Vermont, students are allowed to participate in VPA activities in a manner consistent with their gender identity. In the gay agenda, we queer up hot spots. Hot Shots Happening Out presents photos of the 2023 Miss Scandals pageant. Hot Shots Happening Out celebrate Scandal Saloon. Miss Scandals 2023. Organized by Scandal Saloon, this year's Miss Scandals 2023 was a huge success. Participants of the pageant included, Francesque Richards, Mercury Rising Cox, a famous illusionist and drag queen from Miami, and Rain Chambers. The contest took place at the Scandals Saloon in Wilton Manors. The Miss Scandals 2023 was announced after entertaining performances by these contestants. Francesque Richards became the Miss Scandals in 2023. She is a known and experienced drag queen from Florida, and one of the favorite ladies in Lips Fort Lauderdale. She once called Huntsville, Alabama home, and her past accomplishments include Miss Gay Alabama U.S. of A, 1991, and prelim to Miss Gay U.S. of A. Keep watching our incredible LGBTQ plus world at Hot Shots Happening Out. Follow and subscribe to celebrate the best of us. This is our non-profit 501c3 mission from Hotspots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network. That is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. 
If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV? Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If, you, if our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network, and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson, and on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Jasmine Rogers, Jeff Oliverio, and Raji Nareen Singh, we will see you daily at 8 p.m. But before we end our broadcast, we have one final story. Next, let's queer up the big interview. Fort Lauderdale's gay mayor warns of, quote, creeping levels of hate towards LGBTQ plus community based on pride flag vandalism. Breaking news today as the brand new 75 foot progressive pride flag street installation at historic Sebastian and A1A on Fort Lauderdale Beach has been vandalized. Fort Lauderdale's gay mayor, Dean Trentalis, sat down for the first and exclusive interview with Queer News Tonight lead storyteller, Al Ferguson. The LGBTQ plus community tribute was introduced on February 10th in advance of Pride of the Americas. It took less than three weeks for it to be vandalized. Trentalis says today that the event is part of the quote, creeping level of hate, end quote, we are experiencing in this progressive city and from Florida State House and Governor's Mansion. The mayor gives some hope of the progress Fort Lauderdale has made in the 50 years since the 1970s. Infamous gay mayor Clay Shaw who attacked the historic gay Marlin Beach Resort and declared, quote, no gays in Fort Lauderdale, end quote. The mayor also talked about the current Florida legislative session, including what he deemed fascist attempts to usurp local control to, to control cities, school boards, diversity and inclusion, schools, and more. There were ominous warnings of this attack on the new pride flag street installation in social media just days after it was unveiled. One post said, quote, I live too far away, otherwise I'd be vandalizing that property, end quote. Another said, quote, let's see how long it lasts, end quote. While still another said, quote, do a burnout, end quote. Most disturbing was a post straight out of the Twitter handbook of January 6th Capitol riot, and it's gonna be wild by a social media poster saying, quote, all right, y'all, stop by the paint store. Y'all know what to do, end quote. Well, as everyone knows in Queer News Tonight, we say uh, lovingly that we broadcast from the gayest place on planet Earth and uh, no better person to uh, close into many of the things that go on here is our uh, mayor, Dean Tritellis, and he's joining us today. Uh, joining us today in Queer News Tonight, not because of the best news. Um, yesterday, it was vandalism uh, at Sebastian and A1A of the new Pride installation, the Pride flag. Uh, that is on Sebastian Street. Uh, Mayor Trentos, thank you very much for joining us. Great, thank you for being here. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, may I call you Dean? Yes. Uh, I've known you quite a while. Uh, Dean, uh, so uh, let's do a recap of what's happened. I was with you, interviewed you a year ago when, uh, when the temporary, uh, I believe it was a vinyl installation. It was a vinyl installation, yeah. yeah. Vinyl installation of uh, the, the progress uh, flag that we put on a section of Sebastian Street, which is the tradition, become a traditional LGBT uh, section of the beach, um, and uh, and we thought it was appropriate to to recognize our community here, which has been part of our community for many decades, and uh, and uh, and so we put a temporary installation at the time, and uh, with the intention of ultimately making a permanent. Yeah, in February 10th, that became public uh, and permanent. I mean, the permanent uh, paint installation, uh, quite beautiful. Uh, you inaugurated it on uh, February 10th. Uh, there was a lot. I remember when we covered it, we, we did the news uh, of it. It received a lot of national news of Fort Lauderdale doing this. Uh, but I remember thinking uh, the week of February 10th when it started, gosh, there's just a lot of negative comments uh, coming from different spheres about uh, uh, about it, and 
Uh, yesterday, uh, many of the comments that were kind of foreboding uh, came true. Uh, it was vandalized yesterday. Uh, tell us about what happened. So, uh, on February 10th, uh, the, uh, the community came together, the city commission um, uh, approved the, the installation of a permanent uh, uh, progress flag in the Sebastian Street in and of itself. And Right off very famous street on Fort Lauderdale Beach, A1A. We joke in our own community, it's gay. Yeah, one a right. So, uh, and we inaugurated it this that particular time because it was uh, the week of our uh, Pride of the Americas event, and so it was very important for those, especially those visiting our community, to see a symbol of inclusion and diversity uh, of who we are here in Fort Lauderdale, and we are that city. We are that city where where people can feel welcome and, and inclusive, and uh, and it, not just the LGBTQ community, but uh, almost every community that feels that they have uh, a singular identity, uh, we embrace them, we, we include them. And uh, and it's fun to be a part of, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, you have uh, friends and, and family and, and uh, a cohort of, uh, of coexistence, which we feel is healthy for any growing community like ours. Mm -hmm. So, um, so as we, as I think we kind of expected there would be some sort of vandalism, uh, you know, attempted here, and uh, it was just a matter of time. It happened in Delray Beach, and uh, and so uh, and this particular installation uh, was really not just paint on the road. We actually um, the asphalt itself is colored so that it's really a permanent installation. So we're going to be able to repair it fairly easily and uh, and it will continue to be a symbol of our community. We're, we're showing pictures of uh, vandalizing. Help me describe. What so basically it's just the long, long skid marks. Uh, it's a 75 foot long flag. So there's a, there's skid marks about two thirds of the way th uh, through it in several locations. And so uh, some may say, oh, it's just pranksters and others may say it's an overt expression of bigotry and hatred. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know the answer to that. We're just, we have cameras who video the, 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 uh, the time in which it happened. We identified it was February 28th. So several days ago and uh, and the police are investigating. We will we'll find out who the culprit, our culprits were. Well, and, and I wanted to ask that uh, because I read uh, several comments uh, that uh, there was some confidence that uh, the we'll perpetrator the would uh, yeah. would be identified, and you get to the bottom of that. Still encouraged that. That's yeah. What so we're happen. we're we're very we're encouraged to be able to get to that point. But in the meantime, the thing is that you know people have got to realize. And, and our community has known this for a long time, that, that there's always going to be those who harbor resentment and hatred towards uh, uh, minority groups. And uh, whether it be our community, uh, the Jewish community, black community, uh, any immigrant community that comes to Fort Lauderdale, there's always resentment for whatever reason. And, uh, and you know, that's not tolerated in our city. We, we, there'll always be expressions of it. I mean, two weeks ago, we found SWAT stickers painted on the, the columns of a bridge down on the southern part of our city. Uh, we immediately painted over them. Uh, so it, it's not to make a big deal about this, but it's just a, a way to announce to the world that we have to be better people, you know, and we don't want to tolerate this in our own city, and we don't tolerate uh, and our local newspaper picked up on it, and and uh, and and I'm happy for that because we are not going to be brushed under the rug. We are not going to be told to just keep to ourselves and don't don't be so expressive. We are who we are. You know, people should be proud of who they are, yeah. and, and that includes the LGBTQ. The, the very famous phrase, "Silence means fear," uh, and you're not going to be silent. As our viewers know, by the way, our community invented that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly true. Uh, and 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 uh, it allows me to say, uh, Dean Trentalis is the first gay mayor of uh, Fort Lauderdale, and uh, mayor of one of the largest cities in America here in Fort Lauderdale. When I came uh, to Broward County in Fort Lauderdale four years ago, associated with um, uh, Hot Sauce Magazine and Half the Up Television Network, I learned a phrase that I had never heard before. I worked for years at, you know, with RuPaul's Giant Grace and other kinds of things, but I learned that Fort Lauderdale and Broward County was a majority-minority 
uh, destination is that the majority of the population is represented, the majority of people in Fort Lauderdale and this county are minorities. And that's a very unusual thing. That doesn't happen in Dothan, Alabama, for example. Um, so that's why uh, hate expressions in this very progressive community is likely going to be a shock to a lot of people around the country. We just had this historic record of all of these cruises that had 17,000 people cruise out of Fort Lauderdale in 30 days, LGBT, yeah. breathtakingly sunny. What's your reaction to uh, hate in such a progressive community? So we identify the existence of hate and, and, the, and the reason why you have to admit to it, because if you don't admit that it exists, then you're never going to be able to be able to deal with it. OK, so we have to admit that it exists and we have to find ways to to minimize it or mitigate its its impact. Um, one of the ways of doing that, of course, is to call it out. If you try to hide it and try not to uh, to make a big deal about it, then then uh, the, those folks will keep pushing the envelope. They'll see how far they can get and what, what will be the next step? Are they going to burn down a building? Are they going to do something to get attention? So that's the first step, calling it out, identifying it, and understanding that it exists. Once you know that, you're now able to, as a community, community to come together and to, and to embrace one another and say, this is not welcome in our city. This is not welcome in our county, nowhere really in our state. You know, you hear a lot of rhetoric in Tallahassee, you know, the don't say gay bills and things like that. So, you know, when you when when people hear that, it gives license to those that already harbor hate and resentment to start to say, OK, it's a, it's a, all right to to perpetrate acts of violence or vandalism against those groups that represent the very minorities that the that the government in Tallahassee is saying it's OK to 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 be negative about. And, and we can't deal. We can't accept that. Yeah, and you were you were you were quoted overnight of something that uh, really struck me. You said in relation to uh, we understand what you're saying and the city's response and the and the county's response the response to standing up to um, to events like this the swastikas at the bridge, for example. Uh, but you said uh, this is an example of the creeping level of hate. Um, uh, what did you mean by that? And who are you talking about when you say that? When I say the creeping level of hate, um, we're starting to, uh, you know, when I grew up um, uh, a long time ago, <laughs> we, America did experience segregation, discrimination, and hatred. It was especially against the African American community. Um, uh, the gay community wasn't even an issue back then in the, in the 50s and 60s. It, uh, the gay community started to realize itself in the 70s. I guess Stonewall ignited that, but then it really started to, to evolve in the 70s. And during the AIDS crisis in the 80s, it became, we became much more visible as a community. All right? So because we became more visible, we became more of a target. All right? um, when I see what's happening here today, I'm seeing a resurgence of, of, um, of an intolerant segment of our community, of our society. Um, I hate to say it, but I think it was once again ignited by President Trump when he was president. He, it was okay to denigrate minorities. Uh, people were, were now targets, where before America was a much more tolerant society. I mean, let's face it, we elected an African-American president. Uh, we had many more people in the LGBT community in the in different levels of government. You had people like myself being elected in communities like Fort Lauderdale, which has been traditional conservative, uh, to be able to, to now be as a role model for others to, so to, to exhibit the minority majority uh, segment of our community. The creeping elements are those that are now starting to come in from the, from the peripheral areas of life. And they're seeing that, that the walls of, of tolerance have now been taken down. That you can now, you can now uh, penetrate uh, mainstream society and mainstream society is not gonna say anything. So it's starting to, it's starting to seep into our psyche, seep, seep into our day-to-day -day existence. And this is where I feel that we need to nip it in the bud. We need to call it out and we need to um, prosecute 
anybody who tends to to feel that this is this is okay way of, of doing things. It's not okay. It's it's interesting. I want to compare and contrast to what you just said as mayor of Fort Lauderdale. In the 1970s, um, Sebastian Street was very important uh, as the launch of. Um, really the modern history of the gay community, the Marlin Beach Hotel. We were just talking about that a few minutes ago um, before we started our interview. Uh, the Marlin Beach near Sebastian uh, had a mayor of Fort Lauderdale at the time, Clay Shaw, very famous uh, for his. Who tried to shut down the Marlin Beach. Yes, yeah, tried to shut down the Marlin Beach and, and famously said there's going to be or there is no gays in Fort Lauderdale, famously said. Uh, and, and that fight uh, through the 70s and the 80s, uh, comparing and contrast Clay Shaw as mayor of Fort Lauderdale uh, over the last 50 years to Mayor Dean Trentellis. And Fort Lauderdale then in the 1970s and Fort Lauderdale today in 2023. What kind of growth do you think you've seen in the so, community? So the, what's happened in our community is I'm not going to say that the, the population of the 1970s has had a change of heart or, or has uh, a different point of view when it comes to social issues. Um, that may have happened amongst uh, some of the folk that you know are born here or were born or raised here. But a lot of it has to do with population changes. Uh, new people coming to our community. Uh, you know, when I first was being, when it was first suggested I run for mayor back in 2018, um, you know, having been here for so many years, I never really felt that a, a person uh, with my background uh, and my uh, sexual orientation was that Fort Lauderdale was ready for that, okay? And In 2018, 2018 you didn't I didn't think that at all. Really? I personally did not think that. Mm -hmm. Everybody else said I was wrong. So I said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just run for mayor and let's see what happens. And people said, well, when you become mayor, you're going to change things. And what I discovered is when I became mayor, I realized that things had already changed. For me, for a community like Fort Lauderdale, with the history that you just described, to uh, allow uh, someone who is openly gay to be mayor with 65% of the vote, okay, showed me that Fort Lauderdale had already changed. That pe new people were moving into the area, the, the folks that were already here uh, understood the realities of, an, of, of what America is like, what is like now. And uh, so between the change of, of, of points of view, as well as new population, Fort Lauderdale is the community that we now see today. Mm, interesting. Um, last week I was involved, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, happening, I'm going out and broadcasting uh, either the Los Angeles or the West Hollywood Parade. We've been invited to come out. And in the conversation of the, uh, the Google Meet, the video Google Meet, we got into an interesting conversation of uh, what is the gayest community in America? And more importantly, which is the best gay community right, in America? And, and I just want you to, uh, to know that for one day one. We won that proud of that. Yes, we're exactly. proud of it, right? You know, it's a great, great community. Um, I want to talk about the politics of what we're getting ready to watch with the legislative session. This issue about the creeping level of hate, it seems to me is interconnected with what we're getting ready to watch. You know, we're watching it. Well, you're watching. seeing it. You're seeing it creep into our legislation. You're seeing it evolve into even greater. Uh, um, restrictions on what can be taught, what can be said, uh, who can organize. Uh, for example, in the last year's session, uh, the Don't Say Gay Bill was targeted to uh, third graders and under. Now they're creeping up to eighth graders. So there's the creeping nature of bigotry and hate. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, I, I was reading in the, uh, uh, in the news today that, you know, the governor has now twisted our, our slogan from Don't Say Gay to Don't Say They. And a slap to the transgender community, right? So we're going we're to continue to see um, those who are not looking to uh, invite social change to continue to nip at the, at the corners of progress that we have been able to make as a society over the last 40 years. And, and if we do not um, collectively find ways to try to re repel that and, and resist that, you know, all these years that I've spent uh, trying to make uh, legislative change at the county, the cities, throughout the, throughout our community, to, to and even throughout the state, to try to include sexual orientation, gender identity as protected classes against discrimination. 
you know, 10 years ago, I said, okay, my work is done, okay? But now I tell all the young people, I said, you now have more work than we did because now while, the, while we do have the laws of the books, you have, you have a whole new segment of society looking to, to undo all of that in a way that is, that is gaining steam. So you really, really need to, and I'll tell you, I was at the Democratic Party, uh, uh, the, the county um, Democratic Party uh, banquet the other night, and um, I was so happy to see so many young people so engaged, so energetic, and so willing to take on this effort that we now need to, to, we now need to do. The, the proof of the, the expert testimony of such that you just did, you were mayor, Yes. Uh, you are an attorney. Yes. Uh, we're coming from your offices on Walton Drive uh, in, in the heart of one of the most dynamic uh, LGBT neighborhoods, certainly, uh, in America. When you watch the legislative session and what the supermajority that Governor DeSantis has, and things like you're going to be, uh, you'll have to report if you're a blogger. Uh, speaking against uh, the governor, or uh, we lower... That's, that's just fascism, and, uh, well, pure that's and simple. Yes. I mean, you can call it by any other name, but historically, and from a political science point of view, that's just fascism, okay? Trying to, you know, it was really interesting, at this Democratic banquet the other night, uh, the, the centerpieces were made of stacks of the banned books, so all the books that are now banned okay, from, from our libraries and school boards uh, were, were the centerpieces <laughs> at each table. And I thought, how clever is that? And actually, I read most of those books when I was in high school. So um, it's just, we are, we, this is what's creeping into our society. You know, Florida is the epicenter of this fascism. And we know it, we see it, we, we're, we're living with it every day. Our school boards are being, are being reshaped. Uh, and and it's a it's a concerted, direct, deliberative effort to try to reshape how society should live and learn and and uh, interact with one another. And and that's the danger we're now going to suffer. You know, I'm curious. We reported uh, the book that was pulled out of Fort Lauderdale High School's library, mm -hmm. um, um, largely because of the orientation of LGBT out of the book. And it received a lot of national attention, our report that we did at Queer News tonight. And the reason was is because it was Fort Lauderdale High School. We remind viewers all over the country, a book was banned out of Fort Lauderdale High School, a school uh, that you uh, represent as mayor of the same city. Um, Fort Lauderdale High School is on the same street as this law office, in the same just down the street, down the street of Wilton Manors, the gayest place on planet Earth. The the the, the loading uh, gathering point for the Stonewall Pride Parade and Festival is the parking lot of Fort Lauderdale High School, and and this June when we go to the Stonewall Pride, we'll be able to look at the library that banned an LGBT book. Is that right? It's just on you. It is. It's just on the other side of the Rainbow Bridge, and. Uh, um, it goes to show you how close to home this is hitting. It's not something that we can just say is a fad or it'll go away or, you know, once Governor DeSantis is out of office uh, and once there's a change in certain legislative positions that, that this momentum will, will ease. I don't believe that. I believe that many of the folks that believe in this, in this uh, new level of fascism are going to continue to take it to the next level if we do not do so. And everyone's afraid of what, you know, we have a county government that's afraid to pass a resolution uh, asking the governor and the legislature to reverse their decisions on, on certain matters regarding African-American studies and so forth, because they're afraid they're not going to get their funding from the state. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's blackmail. It, 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 it allows me to transition. The one, one last political related question I want to ask you about is that was at the LGBT Democratic Caucus in Orlando last weekend, and so much conversation Conversation. conversation uh, one of the principal speakers is the youngest uh, congressperson ever, Max, uh, Maxwell Frost. And, and the issue that was so topical there was what's going to hit you right on the chin as mayor of Fort Lauderdale, that the state's interest, the governor's interest, the supermajority's interest is to usurp your power and decision-making and move it to the state. That's Are exactly you concerned exactly. about that? I'm very concerned about it. It has nothing to do with uh, gay and lesbian rights. This has to do with um, 
meat and potatoes stuff that we deal with here in the city, you know, zoning and, and environmental issues and, and, uh, and, and law enforcement and uh, all kinds of things that, are, that, that, that the cities are, are responsible for. There's absolutely no way someone, uh, you know, 800 miles away is going to be able to understand what's going on here locally, all right? So, uh, and that's a threat to the form of government that we have here in, in Florida. If they uh, if they take away most of the home rule aspects of you know municipal government, there's really no purpose for municipal government. Mm -hmm. And somewhere up in a, in a bureaucracy up in Tallahassee, they're going to be able to tell people in Fort Lauderdale whether this building is too close to the edge of the boundary line, you know whether there should be a variance, whether we should uh, you know uh, require environmental cleanup to a certain site, whether you know all these issues that that we deal with on a day to day basis. Um, there's no the, the bureaucracy couldn't be big enough in Tallahassee to be able to handle this. That sounds like completely antithetical to me to small government conservatism. Well, the Republicanism today is not the conservatism of the past. It's it's morphed itself into a completely different ideology. I think we've all seen that. Um, you know, we've seen that they're not so much about. Um, they're not so much about reducing government; is they're more in terms of how do we gain control of people's minds and and the and and how do we gain control of the message, and they'll do whatever they can to do that. Um, and and to me, the only way you can do that is to create uh, a stronger central government so that you you basically usurp the power of the localities. You know that's antithetical to what America has always been about. If I'm from New England, and I, I grew up in the history of understanding what, what local democracy is all about, and this is completely wipes away all of that. And Your region of the country threw the tea into the harbor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe we need to do that again. Um, uh, last question that relates to it. I know it's an incredibly tough time for LGBT and what we're facing. I know um, you are, are standing up as the mayor of this, uh, this major city. Um, that is so LGBT embracing and minority representation embracing. Um, what kind of things would you say to the LGBTQ community, even despite what, what we're watching? Uh, any any uh, any observation? Well, it's aware of this as so well? you know, I I moved from a very liberal state uh, to Florida forty years ago, almost forty one now, and I knew there was work to be done here, and I ended up in, in Fort Lauderdale and Broward County, and you know, it was from this base that we sought to see social change. Um, we made certain headway. Uh, we tried to um, uh, carry our message through other parts of the state. Um, we've been we've been successful as a state in trying to cobble together an ideology that we feel is progressive and well-meaning and and intending to help the the day-to-day -day lives and quality of life of people in our communities. Um, uh, but what we're seeing now is. Um, you know, people see that, that in the national news that Florida, you know, has all these laws that are passing and they're usurping local government and they're changing school boards and, you know, they're trying to uh, tell people they can't talk about black history, they can't talk, talk about LGBT rights, they can't talk about all these things. And people actually think that that's what's going on in the state. Well, we know better here, living here, that we have a free and open society and there are attempts to do that. But we also have to project to the world that we are a vibrant, self-sustaining, uh, and engaged community that we're not going to let that kind of mentality overtake us as, a, as who we are in, Flor in Florida. We are all Floridians, okay? And no one can lay claim to what a Floridian is going to be. That's why we love Florida. It has its, its diversity, its inclusiveness, and I think that um, those that watch from, you know, their, their, their uh, television stations in Nebraska or California, and they see the images on, on, uh, on television of what's happening through the, through the lens of the legislative process or what the governor is saying, I think is a, is a mistake. It's the same thing that happens when we learn about other countries. We think that, you know, people in other countries are basically what is envisioned uh, on, on uh, television or on the internet, but you have to go to those countries to really understand what the people are like, what, 
what foods they eat, what their interests are, not what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's that would be a mistake for people to think that the people in Florida, especially here in Fort Lauderdale, um, have are akin in any way to the to the the type of agenda that the folks in Tallahassee are pursuing. Now, getting back to the skid marks on our flag, there are always going to be outliers, and there are always going to be people who are trying to make a statement. But we are strong, and we are faithful, and we are going to make sure that the equality is the main the main focus here in Fort Lauderdale and Broward County, and that's what I'm here to stand up for. I want to give you the opportunity to say about uh, tourism. Tourism is one of the major industries in Fort Lauderdale and Broward County. A lot of people around the country may be listening. Stacy Ritter at Visit Lauderdale. Visit Lauderdale is one of the best destination uh, travel organizations yeah. in America, and promoting Fort Lauderdale and Broward County for America and the world to come here. Um, uh, I recently uh, went to a lunch where she spoke and she talked about how difficult Tallahassee had made it for the mission for Fort Lauderdale and Broward County to uh, prevent a uh, voice around the country to say, well, we shouldn't go to Broward County or we shouldn't go to Fort Lauderdale because of what we're watching in, in Tallahassee. Um, her message was crystal clear. Uh, you have just basically touched on it again. Tell us why. She's right. And she's, I, she, you know, I applaud her efforts, and uh, um, and you know, she's out there throughout the country. She's getting the feedback. She's hearing the the the, the thoughts that are being expressed, and, uh, and and but the governor will look at the number of people moving into the state and say that you know this what message she's trying to carry uh, carry across is being contradicted by the thousand people a day that are moving to, to Florida. Okay, so. Um, so we kind of we're kind of living in different worlds, but that's the that's the beauty of Florida. We are an extreme extremely diverse state, um, and Broward County is the home for people that you know that have a, a very open progressive uh, point of view, and we will continue to be that that community. And Visit Lauderdale will will spread that message throughout the country and throughout the world, uh, and we're there to to support that you know that. Undertaking. Yeah. Um, last words about uh, the Pride installation out at Sebastian uh, Street and A1A. Um, we can expect uh, repairs to be completed approximately. Oh, I don't know. When that, it, but we are, uh, we, the, the vendor has been contacted. They're going to give us an idea of what it's going to take. But again, uh, the city is not, uh, you know, it's not uh, yielding in any way. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to repair it. We're going to be more vigilant. We're actually going to put a seal coat over it now, which we probably should have done originally, but we're going to put a seal coat on it so that any any attempt to damage it can just be washed off. We encourage everyone that's uh, watching uh, this uh, special interview with Fort Lauderdale's mayor uh, to visit Fort Lauderdale and come to... And come to Sebastian Street. And come to Sebastian Street, <laughs> exactly, in day one day. Yeah. Uh, mayor Dean Trentellis, mayor, gay mayor, uh, first ever gay mayor of Fort Lauderdale. Thank you for very, very much for joining us. Uh, Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Thank you. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ.